Hey everybody. How's everybody doing today? Did you get the lyrics? Oh well, it's very serious business, so I have to study the lyrics. There's so much going on in the lyrics that you'll probably need to read them at home. So we're going to get started. We'll just close the doors so that we have less outside sounds coming in. And we're here today to talk about rap and Islam in France, in Holland, and Germany. And uh, we are interested in the lexical field, the Arabic lexical field as it is manifesting in French and Dutch and German. Okay? So this is a really important language contact phenomenon that has been unfolding for about 20 years or so, but has really gained attention through rap in the last uh, really decade or since 9-11. So we're going to talk a little bit about this interesting cultural phenomenon today. And let me thank you for coming and uh, thank Eric for organizing this interesting event. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let me just mention a thing or two about my methods. So this particular project draws on three approaches, as you can see here. Uh, linguistics, of course, language uh, contact is an interest of mine, and French and Arabic, and of course Dutch and Arabic and German and Arabic are you know, contact um, phenomena that, that are very important right now in Europe. This also entails ethnomusicology, of course, since we're looking at songs and rap lyrics. And then thirdly, religion. So I'm interested in a multidisciplinary approach to language contact and cultural studies. I'm interested in multisensorial work, and so rap is sound, it is a visual culture. Right? It, it has multiple senses that it entails. Here you can see a map of Europe, and of course the dark green represents right, a higher percentage of Muslims in the particular country. There you can see 7.5% of France is Muslim, approximately 5.5% of the Netherlands is Muslim, and about 5% of Germany is Muslim. And you can see listed there some of the sources of uh, Muslim migration into Europe. Right? In France, most importantly, Algeria and Morocco. In Holland, Morocco is an important source, and in Germany, Turkey and Iran are important sources of Muslim migrants. And in the next map, you can see, of course, the sources, the, the countries where many of the migrants uh, are born in and eventually leave, and there you can see that uh, the percentage of, of uh, Islam is significantly higher, right? 90% approximately in the regions where most of the Muslim migrants are leaving from into Western Europe. All right, so I have been interested in the last few years in firstly identifying what is the Islamic lexical field in rap texts. So when we talk about a lexical field in linguistics, we're talking about how a sort of group of words can be thematically related to one another. So we can talk about the farming lexical field, or we can talk about the lexical field of trees or plants, or right, different types of animals, and you can uh, go broadly or narrowly. So when we talk about the lexical field, we're talking about these related terms. And then I've been interested in comparing the, these words, these uh, most uh, Islamic Arabic borrowings that I find in European rap texts with what the general public in France and in the future Holland and Germany think about these terms and whether they're, they're familiar with them. So I'm interested in this comparison between the rap community and then the general community. And so I've started some of that work uh, over the summer in Paris. And then the long-term goal of my project is to look at the source of this Islamic lexical field in rap, which is, of course, the mosque. 
right? So uh, that would entail visiting mosques in France, Holland, and Germany to see how the language practices exist. And of course, if you know something about uh, mosques and language practices in mosques, you, you realize that in France, Holland, and Germany, if the sermon is provided in Dutch, French, or German, there's going to be an extensive use of Arabic in addition to those national languages. It's part of the right, Muslim linguistic culture, citing from the Quran in, the, in Arabic, from the Hadith, right, the tradition about uh, the Prophet in Arabic, but then also a rich world of borrowings that are used in French, Dutch, and German, and English, of course, in this country, in the context of the mosque. So it's very important for me down the road to do extensive research into the language practices at mosques because they inform what's going on in hip hop, especially in, the, in terms of the Islamic lexical field. Right, so hip hop is now, of course, a global culture. And as we start exploring it in China and Guatemala and Haiti and France and Germany, you quickly realize that it's a kind of scaffold in, into which different cultures express themselves. Right? So it has this tremendous global reach. It was adopted in Europe in the late 1980s and early 1990s, and very successfully to the extent that today uh, Germany and France have right, the second and third biggest hip-hop industries in the world after the United States and Holland is in the top 10. So the genre has been tremendously successful in planting itself in Europe. And so 30 to 40 labels, uh, major label releases annually in France and Germany respectively, 15 to 25 in Holland, and then dozens and dozens of independent releases. And it turns out that many of the releases are produced by Muslim rappers in France. Uh, and that's a little bit different than the United States where I would say Muslim rappers are probably a minority, but they're probably a majority in Europe. So it's quite a different sociological situation. And then what it interests me as a linguist is to see how rap is this vehicle for the diffusion of this Arabic lexical field into a broader segment of the population than ever would have been imaginable before electronic media, the internet, and Right, rap music. So it's really doing an incredible job to make uh, the European public familiar with this lexical field for the first time in history, really. Or at least at this scale, right? Arabic has been in contact with European languages for what, well over a thousand years, right? So in terms of the impact of rap, this is a, a quick screen to, to just show you the units that are sold and to compare it with classical or classic literature I just took uh, the case of France uh, because I, I'm all over the, the numbers for that country. But there you can see the top selling author in France for a roughly 10 year period was Guy de Maupassant. He's famous for his short stories. 3.7 million units. And you have a guy like MC Solar selling 2.7 million units. So there is some comparability. And these numbers are just to show you that it is a phenomenon that is having a very broad reach and should be taken very seriously. Uh, recent rap sales have also been quite important in terms of units. And I've actually highlighted rap artists on this list of top sellers who use the Islamic lexical field. So you can see there four out of these five albums have a rel relatively robust use of this lexical field. Just to give you a sense, right? This is happening right now uh, in front of our eyes. So who are the people who are uh, developing this style and then spreading uh, this lexical field? Right? So mostly we are dealing with men between the ages of 18 and 45. There are some right, graying rappers out there. Uh, and they tend to be born in the respective countries of France, Holland, and Germany, and that's what we, we mean when we say 2.0, Generation 2.0, right? As opposed to 1.5ers, there are some 1.5ers, so people who were born in Algeria or Morocco or where, wherever, but came in their adolescence or youth to the different, you know, targets of migration, and then 1.0 are the parents. So most of the rappers are 2.0, okay? And that's a, an important consideration when you start getting into the sociology of this. 
Most of them are bilingual, Arabic Dutch, Arabic French, Arabic German. Okay? But with the Islamic lexical field, since there are many non-Arabic speakers who are profoundly familiar with the Islamic terminology, you have people from Mali, you have people from Iran and Turkey and from Guadeloupe, right, converts who will make uh, you know, rich use of this terminology in rapism. So language scholars are interested in identifying the type of language being used in rap texts. And so to begin that discussion, we talk about a standard language versus a non-standard language, right? The standard language is sometimes called a referential language. It's used in the media, right? And it has uh, power because it's used in government and schools and it provides opportunities for promotion. Whereas in rap music, right, there's kind of a covert prestige, and so the non-standard language uh, is emphasized. And so there are many ways of calling or describing that, such as vernacular, French, Dutch, or German, urban French, urban young style, a term that I inherited from my colleague here, Dr. Nortier. Uh, there is, of course, terms like argot, which, re which refers to slang in French, or strat, dal, street language in Dutch, or kanakisch, it's a kind of immigrant German uh, that is uh, embraced by German rappers. So each country has its term for the kind of uh, language or register that's being used. Okay? And if we talk about the multilingual tendencies, as I mentioned, most of these rappers using this lexical field are bilinguals the European language plus Arabic, but then you also have many who are bilingual German-Turkish or German-Iranian uh, that uh, will also uh, use this. In terms of the religious context, we're really talking about lay person Islam, right? The, you shouldn't be confused between the different sort of types of Islam that we can refer to. Right? There's the ulema, the scholarly Islam, or you could say there's the, imam, the, the Islam of the imams. Right? But in this case, we're talking about everyday people, lay people, people who are Muslims, but don't pretend to have right, special intellectual qualifications. Right? And so this inf influences the type of text that they produce that can sometimes lean towards the vulgar right, or the religiously unacceptable. Okay? That is the, the nature of, the, of this animal, I would say. Generally, sectarian affirmations are rare in rap music. Generally, there is a rejection of extremist ideology, but you will find references to extremism, such as Al-Qaeda and other right, uh, forms of extremism, as part of the delivery of a punchline. So it's important to, to understand right, that a punchline is kind of a striking poetic line that is meant to surprise you. It's not meant to right, call you to jihad. Right? So there can be references to extremist groups in, in rap, but most of the time it's not to encourage extremism in any way. Most rappers in France and Holland are Sunni, and then you have some Shia rappers in Germany from Iran who are working. Okay?